Hi, I'm Alex Cosper. I'm here to tell you about the history of radio. I should add, it's the history of commercial radio, which is a big difference between um, making money and serving the public, which would be public radio. Well, the law was set up so that all radio was supposed to serve the public, but that's not what it turned out to be. So let's just go through the decades real quick. Uh, radio was invented in the late 19th century. There's different people who take credit for it. It was a series of inventions, to be honest. That included inventions by uh, Nikola Tesla and Guglielmo Marconi. So, early 1900s, radio was basically a hobby, something for hobbyists and inventors to explore. It wasn't mainstream, you, didn't, you couldn't just go places and hear the radio. 1910s, if that's what that decade's called, um, it became um, a military medium. It was basically uh, used during World War I to help pilots connect with the ground. Uh, 1920s radio was the beginning of commercial radio. In fact, the 1920 presidential election was uh, the first election ever broadcast live on the radio in terms of uh, reporting on the results. That was the election in which women finally had the right to vote. And uh, throughout the 1920s, radio grew into a commercial medium. The government began to hand out licenses so that stations could broadcast their propaganda. <laughs> tended to be newspapers adding a radio station to their uh, operation and churches uh, spreading the word of God across the airwaves and um, it was the beginning of sports, sporting events being broadcast. Uh, Grand Ole Opry was a national music show that spread country music across the country otherwise most people might not have ever heard of country music. Um, in the 1930s radio, you could finally pick it up in your car. You could drive around in your Model A or whatever um, and um, hear the radio anywhere you went. In other words, you could no longer escape the mass indoctrination of radio propaganda. 1940s radio. That's when things started to get chopped up a little bit, segmented by the FCC. Uh, more regulation to kind of keep a, a level playing field between big biz and uh, small biz radio. Uh, NBC had to be broken up into two different radio networks. Uh, that's how ABC started, as a spin-off from NBC. And then CBS was the other big radio network. Uh, 1950s radio was a response to television becoming the number one medium in the world. We started having TV sets in every living room, thanks to credit cards, uh, allowing people to have extra money to spend that they didn't already have. Okay, 1960s radio, that was the beginning of breaking up block programming. It used to be uh, a lot of radio it was like what public radio became was a different format every hour. So then you had stations separating uh, between um, adult stations and teen stations. Uh, late 60s radio was the breaking away from the commercial structure of radio in which uh, Top 40 had become a big thing, playing the same 40 songs over and over and over again. In some cases, the same 15 songs over and over and over again and just calling it Top 40. Well, the, the response to that backlash was freeform radio on the FM dial. It started with college stations uh, experimenting with album cuts and music that wasn't on the national charts. And from there it grew into commercial stations um, because FM wasn't a big commercial medium yet. It was more of a test. That, uh, our own FCC um, wanted to be marketed as a test to experiment with new programming. And <laughs> what did it turn out to be? A lot of anti war protest music on the FM dial. 70s radio. That was kind of the uh, 
uh, crystallization of corporations starting to move in, consultants slicing and dicing radio up into lots of different formats based on demographics to serve to not the audience but the advertisers so that advertisers knew who um, they can brainwash by segmenting the population. Um, they decided that women like upbeat, high energy dance music. That's why disco took over the charts in the late 70s. And then they decided that men like rock, especially classic rock of the 60s and 70s. So then that became part of the um, message of rock radio in the late 70s through 80s. And then they just kind of decided that arena rock is what men like. Um, let's kind of move away from the message rock and get into the arena rock because that's a lot more commercial. <laughs> you can sell a lot more products with the uh, materialism of arena rock. Um, now, 80s radio, that's when it really started getting segmented a lot. That's where um, consultants sliced and diced it even more. And, decided that within top 40 there's several different segments of an audience uh, that, separated by age group with emphasis on 18 to 34 women who spend a lot of money more than men in that demographic and um, it was basically a way to capitalize on uh, marketing 1990s radio uh, it started getting super commercial and corporate and just everything sounded the same station to station across the nation except for the alternative format that became kind of a rebellion against this big corporate takeover of uh, uh, pop culture consciousness. So alternative went against the grain and it gave us um, a lot of great music which is why it became popular and rivaled the popularity of mainstream music and by the end of that decade there were lots of big corporate mergers to help break that up plus the telecom act of 1996 which was an extension believe it or not bill clinton's extension of, of reagan's deregulation policy of the media so that big biz could take over mass media, which is what happened. 2000s radio was just more corporate, uh, loss of soul, loss of local um, identity type radio in which uh, you just had a lot of more sameness across the nation. Uh, you even had uh, satellite radio coming into the picture so that you could hear the same station if you drove across the nation. 2010's radio basically represents billions and billions and billions of radio debt, racking it up for Wall Street loans. No longer about what the public wants or public consciousness, more about mass brainwashing defended by corporate debt. And that's the history of radio.